For today's deep dive with Hostinger, we're going to have a look at a blank template that I've chosen from the Hostinger library. And I'm going to show you how we can take this design and make it our own by just dropping in some photography and changing some of this content. For this, I've been through ChatGPT and done all of the legwork. So we've got some content that we can work with to build out this page. We're not going to add too much more to it because we've got a few different photo blocks here. So I'm going to talk you through how we can add in two types of hero section, this header section here at the top, how we can swap these images out for signposts and then potentially change the shapes and the sizing and spacing of each of these images. We can go from square to circular photos as well. Now we know what we're working with. Let's crack on. We're going to be using Hotting a Website Builder for most of this. However, to start off with, we're going to jump across to Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how we can use the content expand tool to add a little bit of space either side of this one. So I'm going to drop this photo in place to show you the limitations that we may have with this particular photo. Then if you do have Adobe Photoshop or know someone who does, you can use this content expand tool. And we're going to keep most of the detail to the right hand side. In fact, we might do it the other way. This will become apparent later. So we'll keep that beach to the right hand side and I'm getting plenty of width on this. Once I've expanded it using the crop tool, I can press enter and generate. I've chosen to hide the generative tools for some reason. I don't know where I put them. So I've created entire tutorials showing how you can get the most out of this for web designers. But here's a quick example of three photos that have been expanded via AI. And I think we'll go with this one here. It's close enough to be fine. I think what we're going to do is move the text from the left hand side of the image over to the right into this section on the beach here, just because it means we don't need to put a card or a block behind that text. So let's export this for web. I'll just reduce the size for this image. And we want it in JPEG format. So it's half a megabyte. I could go through and I really should go through and compress this further using compressor.io, which is my favorite for that. But let's save that now. So that's our new wide angle edited photo. And normally I would go through and edit this and get that looking a little bit crisper here. Some of the things here, there's some cutoff bits there, but because this tutorial is not about Photoshop, we're going to jump back. If we go in here and edit the section, we're going to upload our original photo first. See if we can upload both. We can. So we've got our original photo and our wide photo. So let's just drop the original photo in the background and show what happens. As we can see, it's zoomed and cropped. We've lost this text entirely. Even if we were to look to bring it over to the right, there's nothing here that works really well for this introductory text. It's a real pain and a real problem. Obviously, I could look to change this to white. And that just about works. But we can see that there's a little bit of blurring here because it's had to zoom crop so much to get into position. That's not perfect. So with an Adobe Photoshop subscription, and a little bit of tweaking, we can change something that looks more like this. By adding this extra detail on the right using AI, it means we can get these wide angle banners in place rather easily. And we can, of course, expand it, which will zoom crop a little bit to get more of that information in place. Likewise, we can adjust this text block here until we get to a point where we're happy with the format. That's a heading three. Normally you'd have that as a heading one, but I'm going to cheat again here and put it as heading four. What I would do is either go for a shorter title or I would reduce the font size on an individual basis. Technically, we should be doing it this way. We go for heading one and then we go for a smaller size. Or we can go via the main styles and reduce the size of all of our heading ones on our site. So I'm just doing a bit of formatting here just to get our paragraph styling in as I want. And I'm going to use this to adjust the spacing to make it all more compact. There we go. We now have our title, introductory paragraph text, and call to action button all in place. I could go back in and tweak it. As I said, there's a few bits and pieces I want to do, but that's fine for our initial header. Let's move on to the next section where we're going to put in our content. I should put a bit of content in here as well. Just going to get ChatGPT to create me a little more content. It's very cheesy, but we're going to go with that. ChatGPT tends to put too much text in in most cases. It loves to put a colon in and a two part heading. So you can see that's changed the styling, which we don't want to do. We want it to match the original styling. So if it does this to you, we can clear formatting. And now we just need to grab that introductory sentence. 
let's put this in and see how it works. Lengthwise, it's about right. And I think what I'm going to do is just put a full stop here at the end. Just to get it back to that three sentence format. We could put a little bit more breathing space here at the bottom. Shorten that to make it more punchy. Now we've got the content fitting there. We're going to go and look for our signposting. Going to remove the numbered list from the text and just do a bit of formatting to tidy it up. Bring a call to action button in place and just delete the other two options. Now we've got that in place, let's choose that as a heading four, maybe, no, too large. I'll go for a heading six. Again, generally, if I was starting a website from scratch, I would go through and get all of my site heading styles and everything exactly as I want first before going in and adding new content. But that would just be adding time to this tutorial, and I've covered this many times before. I could just duplicate that section. Now we've got the styling as we want. Nice and centrally aligned. One way I could get around this is just to extend these bounding boxes to the grid. So we know exactly how everything's snapping in place. Then we can duplicate this button. Normally I would put in a custom title for each of the buttons. Next up, let's have a look at these three images. I'm going to replace this image, and this time I'm going to go to three images. Just put in Wales. I'm not going to be too fussy about the image selection. And we'll go for this one as the starting point for image block number one. We've got two options. We can either keep them in square and then maybe look at readjusting, moving them around. Or alternatively, we can go for shape. And here, I'm going to go for a circle for each one of these three images. I find with Unsplash and how it fits within hosting and Squarespace website builders, it doesn't allow you to save your searches. So I've got to go and put a new search in each time. It's a minor grumble. Can't, we can't have images of whales without sheep. Welsh mountain sheep as well. Okay, so normally I would just drop that into Photoshop or use a simple image editor to crop these so the you and the lamb are in the middle of the photo. But that's fine in this case. We've got three examples here. For some reason, the quality of the images doesn't look to be right. If we save this and preview it, I just want to check. Yeah, we can see the resolutions improve on the preview mode. So it was just them rendering in the page. So if we go back to our editor, we're going to do one final step on this tutorial. And that is to take these three images. And I'm going to snap them to the nearest grid section so we know that they're all uniform size. And then we're going to align them to the center of each of their blocks. And that line there, so we've got some space below. So we know that they're all uniformly placed. What I could do now is drag them all and move them up into position. But I've just decided that I want to make them smaller again. To make it look more neat and organized. And of course I can do that. Okay, three images which are nicely positioned with the text below them. One final step. I think I'm going to go into this section now and I'm going to change the background color to a light silver just to separate this section from the one below. I think we'll leave it there. We've covered quite a bit here in terms of showing how we can use Adobe Photoshop to expand the width of this image here at the top. And of course, uploading three separate photos, the resolution looks better on preview, so it must be compressing them or just rendering a low res version for editing mode, probably to make it quicker to edit the site, but I've not seen that feature before. Now we've got a nice spacious header image. Of course, we can swap our new logo in place and this three grid structure using the circular frames, which can make a nice approachable, friendly introduction. We've got rural, we've got the historic and castles, and we've got our sheep. Everything that you'd expect when you're visiting Wales. Hope you found this helpful. Next up, I'm going to be creating another deep dive showing how we can fix all of this that we've created on a mobile view. 
to get the perfect balance between ease of use, the flow through our design, and load speed. I'll catch you next time. Cheers. If you have found this video helpful, then why not try out some of our other content? I'm Elwin Davis, founder of Pixel Hate Academy, and I have been running successful fast growth web design agencies for 20 years. To jump further into the Hostinger rabbit hole, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel, use my affiliate link and get 10% off Hostinger, get exclusive discounts on my Hostinger courses and the Pixel Haze VIP membership. On top of all of that, you can now book a one-to-one -one session with me and we can tackle your web design challenges together. You can find all of these options in the description. Enjoy.